What's going on everybody? This is Joe and I am back for another Duskmorn House of Horror pre-release kit opening. Now I say another because I've done three of these in a prior video, all in the same video in fact. So if that's something that you're interested in checking out and you have not gotten a chance to do so already, I will link it up in the top right hand corner there for you. Please feel free to go check that out. But this will be my first solo pre-release kit opening. Welcome to your new forever home in Duskmorn House of Horror. Uh, you can see, hopefully, the sideways image of Valgavoth there. The reason that we are all here, there's like a little, well, I say little, there's a chandelier there as well. There are the locked tokens for the doors, two different ones there, uh, as well as here in the box you have uh, these like finality and um, lifelink and flying and plus one plus one counters and all that fun stuff. Minus one, minus one counters uh, on the box themselves, or itself, I should say. Uh, there's more on the other side, by the way, as well. <clears throat> we also have this, um, these like broken floorboards kind of thing. Um, and then we have the inside box. I don't, uh, I, yeah, I've said this before. I don't love, like, what am I supposed to do with this now? This is like, once you punch out those things, like, do people actually save this? Because if you try to put it back in the box, right, let's let's quickly show this off if you've not used a pre-release kit before, just out of curiosity. So now this box is reclosed, right? Okay, I've closed it, that's great. Now if I store it like this, great, no issues whatsoever, right? It closes, it stays closed, great. If I wanna store it, you know, facing forward so that we can see the name of the set, watch when I let go. It just like pops right open and it just sits like that. There's like, uh, you have to like tape it shut again because now it's just, it's like never gonna not be like that. So it's super annoying. But anyway, that's really neither here nor there. We're here to open some cool product. In fact, speaking of which, we start with a green D20, which I only had one of these. I only had one green and one white, uh, and I opened a lot of kits from this set, so, because uh, I played in a bunch of events as well, besides the one that I opened on camera for all of you, or the ones that I opened on camera for all of you. Speaking of Valgavoth, here is an image of Valgavoth on the divider that comes in the box and that you could use to separate like your deck and your sideboard or things like that. Uh, as they have been doing in all of these pre-release kits, there is a little insert teaching you how to build a pre-release deck, or at least giving you tips on how to do so. How many creatures, how many other spells, how many lands, things like that. Uh, the other thing that I like to say is if you're a newer player, because pre-release is a really good event for newer players, because the um, you, you're probably not going to be much more on an even footing than you are in this instance. Um, and so uh, asking people at the store is also really helpful. Uh, employees, other players, what have you. Uh, I often will give, you know, tips and advice and stuff to people that might be curious uh, who care and who ask, right? I'm not, I, I try not to like just straight up mansplain to people, but if people are actually asking for advice, I try to do my best to give it. So uh, if you're at a good community or in a good um, store, Hopefully they will do that for you. Uh, and of course, you know, I was at Champion Car Card Collector in Poughkeepsie, New York, and shout outs to them because they are great. Uh, let's read what it says here uh, on the other side of this. First of all, I guess I can show the art first, right? That's actually really cool, I like that. But it says, Duskmorn is an endless mansion full of rooms to explore. When batting, battling, thank you. I was like, it should say battling, it does. When battling the terrors of the house, unlocking the right room is often the key to survival. And then they have room rules clarifications. So I'll let you all read that. I'm not gonna, you know, read the rules to you of the game, but um, rooms are a new card type in this set. And so if you need a little update on uh, the rules for rooms, this insert has that for you along with some cool art. Actually, I guess before we do that, guess what? We have the packs. Uh, we will open those it, during the course of the video. That's the whole point. And we also have a code for MTG Arena that we will give away at some random point in the video. It's in this um, little separate package here along with our promo foil, <clears throat> excuse me, rare or mythic, uh, which we will open uh, or show you in a moment. We also have these uh, this punch out token with locked counters, lifelink plus one plus one stun, uh, finality, minus one, minus one, flying, and then more locked on the other side of these. So we'll leave that off on the side. Uh, I mentioned the arena um, code. Like I said, we'll give it away at some random point in the video. But uh, as I have done in the past, 
we actually have more than one code to give away in this video. In fact, specifically three. The next video we do, which will hopefully be next week, but I can't make any promises, uh, that will also be three codes to give away. Uh, and then the week after, the final video that we will be doing of um, individual pre-release kit openings will be one code to give away. So stay tuned for that. <clears throat> um, and we will, like I said, I'll give those away at some random point in this video. But as I mentioned, our promo could be any rare or mythic in the set. And so this is our promo foil rare in Gloom Lake Verge. This is the uh, blue black land. <clears throat> Regular blue whenever you want and uh, can tap for black as long as you control an island or a swamp. That is a gorgeous foil, by the way. I know you can all see that, and I love it. Um, I usually say I don't love opening rare lands in pre-release kits, only because, like, sure, if I'm in those colors, I get to play them. If I'm in one of those two colors, I get to fix. Uh, if I want to, like, splash or something like that. Um, but usually my, like, rares and mythics in sealed are what help you to determine, like, what you want to be playing, and the lands don't help you do that. They just pay you off if you happen to be in those colors, that's all. We have a Spectral Snatcher, the, um, the land cycling cards in this set, very, very good. We have a Flesh Burrower, that's a good one. Unable to Scream, I also like. Fear of Immobility, okay, so, uh, for an enchantment creature. Enchantments matter in this set in certain instances, like for Eerie, or the Eerie ability. We have a Hand That Feeds, Bear Trap, whoops, a Seized from Slumber, good removal spell. A Lionheart Glimmer, another enchantment creature, and a very good one, and that is our first uncommon. We have a Dashing Bloodsucker as the second. Look at how dashing he is. And a Shrewd Storyteller is the third, uh, and it is a gold card, green and white, which means our next card, uh, it could be another uncommon, it could be a rare, uh, it could be a mythic, we don't really know, but our next card is... It is, in fact, another uncommon. With Under the Skin, this art is haunting. Wow. I mean, obviously very thematically appropriate for the set, but wow, this art. My god. Uh, which means then our rare or mythic is... An Enduring Tenacity. So this is one of the um, enduring enchantment creatures, which means it comes out as a creature, and then if and when it dies as long as it was a creature, it comes back as just an enchantment. So again, if you're playing with the eerie mechanic and you lose one of these creatures, uh, first of all, when it enters as a creature, you get the eerie trigger or any eerie triggers. And then when it dies and comes back, you get more eerie triggers. Not bad at all. And of course, the ability then stays around too, which is very nice. <clears throat> Behind it, uh, our foil? No, our land, my bad, is the murky sewer. Okay, another blue or black, blue and black land, notably, which is very interesting. We got two of those plus a black rare. And behind it is now our foil, which is a foil uncommon in Midnight Mayhem. Uh, I guess that, well, I mean, I guess down here at the bottom that foiling is cool. I don't know about, like, the gremlins aren't amazing in foil, are they? Doesn't look like it. Um, this is an incredible card. I actually really like this card. Um, I, I don't know that, well, I guess maybe splashing for it would probably be fine. But yeah, I like this one. Uh, we have a horror token as well. I mean, it's the House of Horror, so that makes sense. Um, and guess what? We have three of them to give away, so I might as well start. It's the first code to MTG Arena. Uh, we This is our small way of saying thank you to all of you for watching any and all of our stuff that you choose to watch. We really appreciate it. Uh, please feel free to shout out in the comments below and say, hey, the first code worked for me. Uh, it'll give us a chance to congratulate you, and hopefully you get some good stuff. You can let us know what you got if you do um, get to open some, some packs uh, from this set with this code. Um, and, uh, yeah, that is, you know, if you're interested in checking out more from us, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Also, if none of these codes work for you and you sub and ring the bell, you'll get notifications whenever any of our videos come out, including the next episode of this or the next video of these that I will be doing that will come out next week so that you can, um, you know, start watching right at the beginning and hopefully get one of those codes for yourself so that you can get some of those rewards on MTG Arena. We start with a Bashful Beastie. Come on. Ah, we have a room in 
the underwater tunnel, and slimy aquarium. The room deck can be very good if you can get it to work. The, um, the blue-red room deck, I liked it quite a bit. We used it on stream a couple weeks ago, and it was a lot of fun. We have Emerge from the Cocoon. Uh, a Rip Chain Razorkin. Four mana, but not a bad card. Fanatic of the Harrowing. Another room, speaking of the, the blue-red room deck. Oops, I think, did I miss a card? I did miss a card. They were, like, stuck together. Well, anyway, we'll get to that one in a second. First, it's Glassworks and Shattered Yard. This is a very good room. The Glassworks side alone is incredible. Three mana, four damage, and then it just sits on the battlefield. Later on, if you can pay the five, they just take one damage each turn. Like, really, really nice. Really good room. I like it a lot. Uh, I mentioned that we missed one. It was Frantic Strength. Not a bad one as well, another enchantment, and with flash, so it's a good uh, combat trick, but also um, a great way to get an eerie ability, or some eerie abilities, to go off um, during your opponent's turn, or, or like at an opportune moment. <clears throat> we have a Fear of Abduction as our first uncommon. Very nice card, a little expensive, but it's a 5-5 five, five flyer that steals one of their things, so. We have a Sporogenic Infection, and a Violent Urge. Which means our next card is a, another uncommon in Right of the Moth. Notably, um, this is splashable for a single white mana, although the flashback does need double white. But um, at this point, we probably would splash blue uh, if, we were <laughs> if we were going black, because um, we've gotten some good black so far. Uh, we'd probably be splashing blue. So if we're going black-white, this is a very good include, very good card. Uh, and our rare or mythic is a Hedge Shredder Vehicle. Um, crew 1, 5-5, five, five, and when it attacks, you may mill two cards, and then if lands are put into your graveyard, you get them onto the battlefield tapped. So it's a way of ramping, although it's four mana to play this thing, and then it would have to attack on turn five, I guess, or if you can ramp it out, um, maybe on turn four it can attack. So, you know, is that ramping for you? Maybe. Uh, behind it, our land is a foil mountain. So the lands can be regular or full art, and they can be foil either way, whether they're a regular one, as you see, or a full art one. Full art lands can also be foil. And then, even if you get a foil land, which, by the way, this one looks awesome, even if you get a foil land, you still get a regular foil in the pack, which is an unable to scream in foil. That, um, that eye, though, right? Yeah, that, like, doll eye. Ooh, creepy. Uh, and behind it, we have an art card. It is the art card for Valgavoth's Onslaught, and if you can see in the bottom left there, it is signed. You can see that, uh, like, reflective signature there. Very, very cool. Some people really like art cards, and if you are one of those people, I want to hear from you in the comments down below. Once again, another code for MTG Arena, the second of three, by the way. Uh, again, our way of saying thank you to you if you are unaware of what we do here on this channel or on our other channels. We have Video Games for All and Gluten Free for All also linked in the description down below, and we encourage you to sub and ring the bells there and or here. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, we are live every Monday here on this channel playing some MTG Arena. Uh, we almost always play Limited, so if that is something that you're interested in, seeing us play Draft or Sealed, we would love to have you join us. Um, and, uh, you know, pop in a chat, say hey, uh, and keep the conversation going. Let us know what you thought of this video, if, uh, if this is what sent you there. We have a Winter's Intervention. This is an interesting removal spell. Wary Watchdog. A Creeping Peeper. <laughs> it's a fun one. Scorching Dragonfire. Speaking of good removal. A Living Phone. Uh, this is also an artifact. So this is a, a creature and an artifact for the purposes of uh, Delirium. Always super helpful to keep uh, in mind. We have a Twist Reality, solid counter spell, or Manifest Dread. Murder, solid removal spell. A Fear of Burning Alive is our first uncommon. Uh, first of all, what a hell of a thing. Second of all, uh, or what a hell of like a name for a card, but um, all of the fears in this set are enchantment creatures, so that's really great. Um, and this is not a bad one at all. Fear of Burning Alive, and like I said, it's our first uncommon. We have Attack in the Box, not Jack in the Box, Attack in the Box. Very interesting as our second. And our third is an Unnerving Grasp, 
with some pretty cool art. I'd be curious if this card is good in foil, if we ever get the opportunity to see that. Very, very cool. Uh, and then behind it, our next card is a baseball bat. Uh, it is an uncommon, again, which means that behind it, our rare or mythic is... Ooh. <laughs> wow. It is an alt art mythic. In walk-in closet and forgotten cellar, it is a room card. So for three mana, you can play lands from your graveyard, or for five mana, when you unlock this door, when you cast spells from your graveyard this turn, and if a card would be put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, exile it instead. Okay. Interesting. Did I, did I read that wrong? You may cast spells from your graveyard this turn. That's really, really interesting, because that is any spell. I mean, the thing that sucks is five mana. Obviously, there are cards in the set that unlock doors for you. Like, if a, a creature will say, like, if it deals combat damage to a player, unlock a locked door. So uh, that would be really a really interesting way to get this going. Um, I, I mean, because we opened it in a pre-release kit, I always look at uh, limited and how that would work for limited, and that would be pretty tough, but not impossible. So if you've done it or if you've seen it done, let me know in the comments. Um, and I, I would be looking for that, but otherwise I'm not going to have this card very high on, like, I must play it. Because otherwise you're paying five mana and then you're going to cast something from your graveyard. That'd have to be very late game. It would could be in sealed, but it would be a little tougher, I won't lie. But it's amazing to have an alt art mythic. It's gorgeous. Uh, behind it should be our land, unless we have multiple rares. It is a regular mountain. And our foil... Ooh, is another room in a foil ticket booth and tunnel of hate. I will tell you uh, from experience playing this, I had two of these in one of my pre-releases in, in one of my sealed decks. Uh, the tunnel of hate, uh, your opponents will find it to be a must answer. Obviously, if you don't have any creatures on the board, maybe not. But uh, yeah, tunnel of hate, a very nice card to have on the field. I like it a lot. Ticket booth is not bad. It's just another way to get a creature on the battlefield. So... Not bad at all. And Manifest Dread, you can you can do some things with that in this set. And here is a 4-4 Beast that you get from Toby, I think his name is, right? Not bad at all. Interesting uh, alt-art mythic there. I like it. Uh, next, we are halfway through. Uh, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with how we do things here on this channel, I would love to know from you in the comments down below what kind of a deck you would make if you had opened this kit at pre-release. Uh, so when we get to the end, let me know. Grasping Long Neck to start. Don't make a sound, another uh, counterspell. Shepherding Spirits, another uh, land cycler. Ragged Playmate. A Fear of Lost Teeth. So not all of the fears are uncommon, and not all of the fears are expensive. Here is a Fear of Lost Teeth. A Cautious Survivor. This is for the uh, showing off the survival mechanic if this creature is tapped uh, during your, the beginning of your second main phase. Cool stuff happens. And there are a number of creatures that are like that, mostly green and white cards. We have a Cackling Slasher, an unwanted remake. So they can manifest dread. I mean, obviously you could do it to one of your own creatures, but uh, if you get rid of like their best creature, they could manifest dread. But it presumably, if you're using this, it would be you're hoping that they don't get something better than what you've gotten rid of. And it's a one mana instant speed removal spell. So that's a hell of a thing. We have a Paranormal Analyst as our first uncommon, Growing Dread as the second, and an Infernal Phantom as the third, with uh, an Eerie ability, notably. Uh, and so, our next rare, or actually, sorry, I shouldn't say that. Our next card, we don't know what it is, is... Okay, I was right. It is a rare. Wow. I must have just known. Uh, we have a Blaze Mire Verge. So it is another Verge land um, from the cycle of rare lands. This one, black and red, with red being the um, sometimes color and black being the always color. Um, we already, again, as you saw, have a blue-black um, dual land as well. Behind it, our speaking of lands, our land is a strangled cemetery with black and green. Uh, all of our fixing lands love the color black. All of them uh, that we've seen so far. And our foil is a foil uncommon in Flood Pits Drowner. I have seen a fair number of this card on Arena used during Limited. Very, very interesting card. And that foiling is super good. I like it. The, obviously, the lower half is uh, very, very shiny. Look at how shiny it is. 
Uh, and then our uh, we have an art card for Let's Play a Game, which I believe is the alt art for it, because I do not recall it looking like this, but maybe I'm just not remembering it well enough. We have two more packs to go, but we also have one more code for MTG Arena to go. In addition to our... Uh, stream on Monday night here playing some MTG Arena at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're also live over on Video Games for All, link down in the description box below, every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern playing whatever video game we happen to be playing at the time. Right now, if you're familiar with what this is, we are going through our second ever Nuzlocke over on that channel. Like I said, every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, we would love to have you join us. We have an innocuous rat to start. Whoops. Well, there's a Vanish from Sight which is convenient that this cryptid in inspector vanished from sight first. Then we have an acrobatic cheerleader. Not a bad card. Another survivor card. We have another ticket booth slash tunnel of hate. This one just not foil, unlike the other one that we got. We have a found footage as an artifact clue. Ooh, whoa. We have a special guest, Mythic in Noxious Revival. So for anyone that's unaware, because sometimes people get confused, special guests you can randomly open in sealed packs. It is very infrequent, but they are legal to be used in sealed, in draft, etc. Because um, I said in sealed packs, I mean, these are just um, play boosters, right? So yeah, you can open these in play boosters and they can be used in whatever limited format you happen to open them in, which is cool. I mean, this is not a bad card by any means. Um, but it's also, I wouldn't, I would argue that it's not game breaking or anything as some have been in the past, but this is a, a cool card nonetheless. Uh, and also, you know, to go along with our other mythic that we opened, they at least share a color. So there's that. That's cool. Uh, then we have our first uncommon because this was before the uncommons, by the way, we have our first uncommon in patchwork beastie. Pretty cute. This guy, we have a commune with evil as the second. I love those colors, man. So good. And a stay hidden, stay silent as the third, which means our next card is an ethereal armor. Very nice. I like this card a lot for the um, red, white, like toys deck or like small creatures deck. Very, very good. It gives the creature plus one plus one for each enchantment and first strike. So at minimum, it's a one mana plus one plus one first strike enchantment. Uh, some of the white cards will have eerie abilities as well that get to go off at that point when you play this. So yeah, this is a really cool one. <clears throat> like I said, I like it for the red white deck a lot, uh, which means now our next rare mythic is an unstoppable slasher. This card is incredible. I talked about the fact that we had some really good um, black and this just adds to it. It's a very, very good card. <sighs> so far, we've opened only black and green rares. And even our two lands that are rares are part black lands. So interesting. Behind it, our land, speaking of which, is an island, regular island. And our foil is a foil common in twist reality. That foiling pattern is fine, right? It's fine. Yeah, but... Yeah, not bad. <clears throat> um, and then we have a Glimmer. I have to say, uh, just glancing through and like trying to remember the cards that we've opened, like obviously our rares and mythics scream play black green, but like I feel like our blue is good. Maybe I'm just biased because I've played a lot of good blue decks recently in this format, but our blue seems pretty good. We've gotten a lot of like good blue removal um, in like enchantment based removal and stuff. Kind of interesting. We've got Emerge from the Cocoon. Turn inside out. I love that art. Those colors are great. Another Fanatic of the Harrowing. Another Grasping Long Neck. Another Don't Make a Sound. A Malevolent Chandelier. We have another Glassworks slash Shattered Yard. That's our second one of those that we've opened. That's four red rooms, by the way, right? Because we had two of these and we had two of the Ticket Booth and whatever the other one is. Uh, we have an untimely malfunction is our first uncommon. We have another room in defiled crypt slash cadaver lab. Okay. And uh, was that all of our uncommons? It, I believe it was. Wait, 
Am I lying to you? I'm lying to you. This, this is our third uncommon, is Conductive Machete. Now, obviously, we still could open an uncommon, but I just wanted to make sure I knew what was coming up next. So after Conductive Machete, our next card is another uncommon, an Overgrown Zealot, an Elf Druid. And so now our last, unless we get lucky with a foil, our last rare or mythic is... Ooh, a Kona Rescue Beastie. So yes, nothing but black and green in our rares and mythics. Nothing but. Very, very interesting. Um, I don't know if we have any, like, big creatures that this would, like, let us ramp out. Or, or like, not ramp out, but, like, play early, necessarily. Um, I guess we got the one, like, literally the first card we opened was the um, six-mana um, Swamp Cycler. So maybe that one with Kona? Behind it, we have a regular swamp, and our foil is a foil. Oh my god, a foil turn inside out. Yes, look at that. What a nice foil. God damn. Again, I talked about liking the colors, and in foil, it's even better. So sick. And we have a glimmer. Hey, everybody. Uh, we opened two mythics, or uh, like a pseudo mythic, as a um, special guest, or whatever you want to call it. So I will leave you looking at those, because that's really awesome. Um, we got an alt art mythic in Walk-In Closet slash Forgotten Cellar, and a Noxious Revival. So very interesting cards we opened this time around. I would love, as I said, to know from all of you in the comments down below, if you opened this kit, what kind of a deck would you make? Like I said, uh, I know that we opened nothing but rare and mythic blue and, I'm sorry, black and green cards, but, like I said, I kind of really like the blue as well. We do have two black-blue uh, dual lands, so it is possible maybe to splash a blue card or two here and there. Um, but I would love to know, as I said, said, your thoughts down in the comments below. Like, with Kona, Rescue Beastie, Head Shredder, and then these two cards that you're looking at here, like, is green really that good? Unstoppable Slasher is incredible, our black uh, Death Touch rare, and our Enduring Tenacity is a really good one as well. Do we just go black blue? I, I, like I said, let me know in the comments down below what you would play if you opened this kit at pre release. Uh, don't forget that I will be back next week with more. So if you subscribe and ring that bell, you'll get notifications whenever any of our videos come out, including the next episode from us here, uh, as well as when you can get more codes and stuff from us, um, if that is something that you're interested in. Thank you so very much for joining me. I really hope you all enjoyed. And for now, from us here at the Geek For All family of channels, I've been Joe. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.